But hey, we're going to get into a week zero recap. Why is John looking a little bit more right about the ACC and Jay maybe not so much? We'll discuss coming up next on Locked On Answers. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Jay, we had a very eventful week zero of college football action where let's just start off the top. The first game of the season, the Florida State Seminoles, fresh off of a undefeated regular season and ACC championship win, left out of the college football playoff because Jordan Travis got hurt and then had this revenge tour in mind, drops their opener to Georgia Tech 24 to 21 in Dublin, Ireland. Yeah, I'm a little upset they embarrassed me in public like that. Um, I, I, I take offense to the fact that they let Georgia tech push them around in the trenches like that. Hey man, shout, shout out to their head coach. Was it, is it Brent key key is I got shout out to him. Coach, coach key. You killed it, right? That team was prepared and they gave Florida state hell the entire time. It, it, it was literally trench work. They were pushing them around. They had the holes open and it was fascinating because before the game, Everybody was hyping up the defensive line at Florida State. It just sounds so familiar with others that we've been hearing about hyping up everybody around them and then downgrading the other ones on the opposite team. I digress. Everything that they were saying about Florida State was exactly what Georgia Tech was. Georgia Tech, they came prepared. It just looked like they were ready to play. And even with their type of offense they were running, I mean, Hayes King out there was showing out. DJ Uyunglele struggled. He kind of looked like himself at Clemson, right? So it was kind of looking like it was a flip-flop for him right back into what he was there. He had like four passes past 10 yards the entire game. You got wide receivers that are burners. You got to launch that thing. Same thing with their running game. I figured the running back it was a Benson was going to, you know, if Benson was catching pass up, the running game was going to do more. It just nothing worked out for them at all in this game. And it was just, they got pushed around. And that's, I think that's the thing that shocked me the most. Yeah, it's it's impressive that Georgia Tech was able to go get that win. Listen, I'll I'll grant Florida State a little bit from the the jet lag situation, but Georgia Tech had to deal with it too, right? But Brent there's no jet lag. <laughs> he had his players ready to roll, you know. And here's the thing: okay, jet lag does matter, but there's not that big a time difference from the East Coast to Greenwich Mean Time. That's not that big of a difference. It's like I want to say it's maybe like four or five hours. And you're playing an 11 a.m. game like that 11 a.m. Like you're playing an afternoon kick. So it's like a four o'clock start time, five o'clock start time. If I've got my my time zones adequately remembered in my mind. So that's not that big of a difference. And you probably got over there several days early to deal with the jet lag. They say for every hour difference in time zone, you need a day of time difference to recover. Well, again, it's not like Dana White in the UFC or the WWE going and, and putting on a promotion where they're, you know, having fights at 3 a.m. so that everybody back here in the States can watch it at 7 p.m. No, the college football powers that be set this thing up to where, yeah, it was 11 a.m. kick locally here, but it was an afternoon time slot over there. So the, the time zone difference, the jet lag stuff, that should have been minimal, to be honest. Florida State just yeah. got beat. And the DJU yep. situation, like, I think you hit it right there, man. He's going to have to start uncorking some balls and taking some chances because that's not going to win Florida State games by just playing check down you. That's not happening. No, and the, and the way that even Georgia Tech plays ball, I mean, Hayes King averaged like nine yards per per pass. DJ was at 7.1, and that that's, to me is bad. And, and again, Benson had 9.8 yards per catch. I thought him coming from Alabama was going to be a game changer at wide receiver for them, a, a, an additional piece they needed after losing a player like a Keon Coleman, right? They they weren't yet they weren't really leveraging anybody in this run. I'm looking at these running backs. They averaged 3.2 yards per carry, while Tech averaged like 5.3 yards. And granted, that's what Georgia Tech's offense is because it's really hard to get players there, but you would have expected that Florida State would have been able to push them around more and a lot better, and they couldn't, right? And even the be – this is the worst part about it, John. Florida State didn't turn the ball over. They just got muscled. It's crazy. There wasn't any like, mistakes, silly no, – nothing. Nothing. That's it. 
Mm-hmm. They just they just got beat up. Yeah, pretty bad. In the other the other notable game of the weekend, uh, SMU. I say it's notable because they're now a Power Four team, but SMU uh, went to the uh, to Nevada to play Nevada and needed a 16 point fourth quarter to overcome a team that's been terrible the last couple of years. So not a great start uh, to their power four time, but Hey, it's first game of the season. We'll see where they end up, but the ACC almost had a pretty devastating first week. Although Georgia tech, I mean, they might be a player now in the ACC. Yeah. And Nevada is the last time I think Nevada was any good was when what Colin Kaepernick was there. And that's been like a good 12 years forever. Ago. Right. <laughs> forever ago and it's just fascinating just to see that they've been bad and smu i think what bothered me with this is how didn't preston stone have the job already locked up after last season right, right. rumor I, i'd ask some people about i was like wait why is stone out the game what's going on and they're like oh they planned on uh lashley planned on going with two quarterbacks this season. I'm like, wait, what? I could have sworn Stone was like the dude last season. He was pretty solid all year. Long. No, they decide they're going to go with two quarterbacks because Stone, one, did look terrible to start the game off, but at the same time, uh, I expected him to be like the main quarterback. Well, I guess he's now in a quarterback battle with his backup. I mean, he threw for 3,100 yards last year, 28 touchdowns, six picks. And in this game, he looked bad. Like, Nevada was like, I guess they were wearing camouflage at home, right? With the blue field, even uh-huh. though the field wasn't blue. We weren't at Boise State. It was just brutal for the way yeah. that Preston Stone was playing. So I'm hoping that Lashley's got a plan to, uh, I guess, help his quarterback uh, or replace him. But the two-quarterback system, man, you can't do that and think that you're going to be successful. I guess against Nevada you can and hope that you can figure out who's going to be the one that steps up. Hopefully now they think that Stone has stepped up and he can just be confident and play. But, yeah. That game was, but it was another good close game. Yeah, we got yeah. we got back. We got good close games the entire just about every game except for, I mean, I didn't stay up for Hawaii. I, I wasn't about to stay up for that game. <laughs> yeah, nobody's nobody's going to be watching Hawaii football uh, from the Central Time Zone. Uh, the other notable note: uh, this one's not on the football field. This is on the recruiting trail. Twenty twenty five five star uh, athlete, safety, wide receiver, outside linebacker, whatever you want to call him, Jonah Williams does Jiu-Jitsu follow master. through with the uh, Steve Wilt Fong Fong bomb and commits to Texas. Apparently that's the the one prediction that he was fine with being out there. Um, but good hey, point. Texas gets a great player, a dude that is just really, really, really good at football. If this prediction or the commitment sticks, uh, they're going to get a good one. We'll see if it sticks. Yeah, I know he's an athlete. Like he he's he's really good. And I went back and watched his tape just to kind of remind myself he he can play all over the place. Now I know that there was a quote that came out from someone in Texas. Uh, it was a journalist. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but he quoted him and basically Jonah said that oh I'm going to be able to start there really quickly. They don't have much depth at safety. And I'm just like wow. I know that that was the uh, accusation about, you know, why Fasusi picked Oklahoma, which it was because he wanted to be uh, by Bill Beatonbow. But it sounded like Jonah just said it out, the the, the quiet part out loud and said, no, I'm going to go in there and start because they ain't got nobody there. (laughs) Which is not not the most uh, gracious thing you want to say as a incoming freshman. That's not going to, I mean, who knows? Maybe uh, those guys will love it. The coaches will love it because it's going to push everybody else. I don't know, but it it certainly uh, would rub me the wrong way if I was on that depth chart at safety. So we'll see, man. It, it's it's going to be a fascinating one. The recruitment is going to be ongoing. Probably Oklahoma is not in it, I would imagine, at this point. Um, but you never know, dude. You never know where this is going to go. He was a longtime Oklahoma fan and opted to play some games. And that's okay. He's got his recruitment. He's allowed to do that. Uh, but Oklahoma is still pretty well set at safety now in the future with O'Marion Robinson, you got a commitment and that dude looks like he's going to be a big time player. This isn't to say that Oklahoma wouldn't take Jonah Williams if he decided to come, but if he doesn't, Oklahoma is still going to be pretty stacked at safety moving forward, courtesy of Brandon Hall. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in, being a part of the show. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Go check us out on the Locked On Sooners Insider Program by texting SEC2024 to 405-817-6711, where you can get 25% off your first month after a two-week free trial period. Again, 
the Lockdown Sooner Insider Program. That's where you can ask Jay and I questions. You can give us mailbag suggestions for the show where we will answer your questions and we'll interact with you on a regular basis as well. That's SEC 2024 to 405-817-6711 to get 25% off your first month. Follow Jay at Unfair Sports, myself at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you do your social media. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your pod- podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. But until next time, he's Jay Smith. I'm John Williams. We'll catch you then. Boomer. Sooner.